Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Heroes of the Storm Nexus Games Europe. We are here for gay for day, sorry, number two. I am going to be your host for today. I am Tetcher. We're going to be guiding you through some marvelous games, but of course, I couldn't do it alone. I am joined by the marvelous Kendrick Swish from HGC China and from his own wonderful personal stream fame. And of course, we have X Team Digital's captain, five time European champion. It is Bakery. How are you guys doing? Doing very well, Tetra. Thank you very much. It's good to be here on this second day of the Nexus Games. Yesterday was one fiery start to the tournament, and I'm uh, looking forward to the games we've got today. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad to be back. Uh, yesterday was a day full of upsets, full of a surprisingly high level of play, actually. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to more of the same today. As I am, I let's have a quick look at some of the stuff we found out yesterday. Let's have a look at our tables to see who is doing what. As you can see in Group A, France with a convincing performance over the UK are at the top of Group A, along with Italy, who were able to vanquish uh, a lot, a lot of people's favourite Finland. Finland was very high in terms of leaving that group, whereas Group B. We had a stellar performance from Hungary, and Bakery had a bit of a surprise, didn't we? Germany performed surprisingly well. They actually took down Belgium yeah. in a 2-1, a, a close series, but most people didn't know who the Germans were, and they yeah. came out of nowhere and showed why you should pay them attention. Yeah, even I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely are showing us who they are and what they are capable of, as we hope some of the teams today will be able to do so in Group C and Group D, which we will be playing with today. Let's have a look at that schedule. Poland will be our first game versus the Czech Republic. Should be very fun. Poland, a lot of people's favorites to do well in this. Russia versus Ukraine, going to be a very exciting game. We have a lot of very high level players uh, in terms of all of Heroes of Storm history from both of those countries. Sweden, another big favorite versus the uh, newcomers, Portugal. And finally, a lot of people's highlight oh, yeah. for the day, Spain versus the Netherlands. Guys, why is that match so exciting? That match is very exciting because Spain is considered to be one of the top three, maybe even top two teams participating in this tournament. They have a lot of prominent figures, eSports legends, Vortex, and uh, Lucifer, most importantly. But on the other hand, the Netherlands, we talked about it yesterday, Bakery, they're a team that can never be underestimated simply because their overall skill level is very good. Absolutely. So the Netherlands are my dark horse for this tournament. They are definitely unknown, but Zavalos and Dark Farmer, yeah. especially two very strong Hero League players and people who kind of have a presence in the scene as well. So it's going to be a hard group for them, but they can definitely cause some upsets here. Let's move about. Let's move on to talking about from one potential upset to another. We are starting off, like we said, with the Czech Republic versus Poland. Now Poland. So many people are hyped behind this team. We have Gugus, we have Zhuf, we have all of these players from Open Division. Some of them even made it to the Crucible to try and make it into HTC. They fell just short, but now they are here to take some names. Bakery though, the Czech Republic. You were talking about upsets earlier. Is this one even possible? So the Czech Republic, while you do look and you, they are a bit of a weaker team, they are not completely unknown. There are at least three players on the roster who are high-level Hero League players who have popped up a lot in our Grandmaster games. Um, having said that, it's going to be very tough for them. Uh, players like Wolfs on the side of Poland, yeah. very strong, very scary solo laners, so it should be tough. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, we can't forget about the eSports legend from StarCraft II, Mana. Oh, yeah. Who yes. uh, has been putting in a lot of work, actually, into that Hero League grind. He's constantly grinding in the ma uh, Master and Grandmaster ranks. Um, he's a terrifying Probius player. Let's put it this way. Maybe we can see <laughs> some of that later on. Um, but as Bakery said, there's no weakness on paper for the roster of Poland. Well, let's see what the maps are going to be in this first series of the day, moving into the picks and ban phase for that. And looks like he's going to start off with Black Hearts being removed by Team Poland. Now, Black Hearts could have been a very interesting one in terms of just PvE. Could that have been a way Czech could have turned it around? I think that's definitely a sensible ban from Team Poland, taking out that uh, that cheesy factor, the map that definitely they won't have much practice on, uh, either in Hero League or in competitive. So definitely makes sense to take that one out. And yeah. Haunted Mines, the other one oh. coming out as well. Another one of those non uh, HCC map pool maps, for example. As for those who don't know, the map pool was voted on by you guys, the audience. And unfortunately, in this particular series, neither of these teams want to play on them. 
Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. I was personally looking forward to seeing one of those battle runs at some point, maybe. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we're going to see them uh, throughout yeah. the tournament. Yesterday, we were blessed by Volskaya Foundry twice, which was very cool to see, for sure. But as Bakery said, um, those battle runs can be very wonky, very snowball yeah. to the point, even. Absolutely. Uh, especially Haunted Mines. Uh, right now, there's some really interesting methods at the highest level where people just aren't going in the mines even. So taking <laughs> that one out from Czech Republic, another sign that they actually want to take Poland in a straight up game. And speaking of straight up games, our map for the first game is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Careful, Kendrick, look out. Oh my god, I was going to say. <laughs> but yes, a very solid map to start with. <laughs> Quite a brawly map though, right? Yeah. Uh, yes and no. So the thing about Tomb of the Spider Queen is it very often favors the team with the stronger draft, the stronger team synergy in the early game especially. You can take that first pain and you can snowball that right on through to the end of the game. So that's definitely going to be a fantastic map for Poland, but at the same time, there are a lot of opportunities for these crazy wonky fights, especially in this four-man rotation. Yeah, and what happened to a team that doesn't really respect the map or doesn't really draft according to the map, uh, that's what we saw yesterday happen to the Team UK. Um, they tried to steal some of the picks away from France, the Tracer, for example, but then they kind of forgot about rotations, about wave clear, and about, hey, uh, if we let those guys, you know, take all the objectives and snowball from there, we're probably not going to win the game, and it didn't go well for them in the end. It did not indeed, but it looks like we are just about ready to head into the pick and ban phase, guys. So let's see what we are going to see. Are we going to see any uh, picks stolen or are there going to be any some unusual priorities? We saw not on this map, but on Dragonshire earlier. Well, oh, you Oh, yeah. We said unusual priorities and you <laughs> mentioned it earlier. Vada, he has his favorites. He has his preferences. Vada, probably the best Probius in the world, to be honest. <laughs> so true to taking Starcraft out motto. makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a Protoss main in StarCraft 2. Um, he likes to play a lot of Probies. He plays Artanis every now and then. And wow. that's it. We're staying true to the theme here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have no Protoss in the game. If Artanis or Alarak are picked next, then this is just a full Protoss <laughs> game. <Yeah. laughs> Even Zeratul could be an option. Oh, yeah, and Zeratul. Yeah. Because you can't have a full Protoss team. It's not very good, but you can <laughs> have it. It's not great, okay, is it? No. Tassadar, please heal your support, right? But no. You can only shield. Do you remember those epic series between uh, you guys or former team, uh, team Dignitas and Fnatic with Tassadar soul support and Tomb? Yeah, oh, no, I, I remember that. Those are pretty good. Solo support Tarande. I remember that much more fondly, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Czech Republic with the first pick of the game. Now, wave clear, exceptionally important on this map, right? Absolutely. Wave clear probably the defining factor of how the early game goes. And Greymane, a fantastic pick for that. One of the best PvE heroes we have in the game. He's fantastic at clearing waves, but he's even better at pushing towers and taking mercenary camps. So a solid pickup for Czech Republic. Yeah, and oftentimes uh, people underestimate the value of mercenary camps on this battleground because there's not really many to pick from, many to choose from. But if you have a laner like Greymane who can solo the Siege Shines, especially in the bottom half of the map, it can really cause and give you, uh, create a little bit of space for you to get a turn in. So um, very, very good pick here. Of course, Greymane also synergizes very well with countless other heroes like yep. Abathur. We can get the cop uh, copies here. Any support, yeah. basically, who keeps him alive. Rhaegar, especially, is someone who we've been seeing a lot of priority on through the last couple days, uh, uh, yesterday, in basically all of the games. So there's a good chance we will see that fairly high up today. Question is, are Poland wanting it now? We saw uh, on some of the maps, maybe Arthas Rhaegar was very popular as well. Ah, bring the mega and, uh, oh, and a Chromie. Uh, so Chromie. speaking about mana again, that's one of his favorite heroes. If you look down his priority list, it's Probius number one, it's Chromie number two. So <laughs> definitely makes sense to get an early pickup. Poland probably favoring more comfort. They know that on paper they are the stronger team. So if they play well and they play what they're comfortable with, then this could be their game. Yeah, and the Chromie, of course, already gives a warning towards the team of the Czech Republic. You need to have dive-heavy heroes who can really reach her in the backline because Chromie's range is one of the longest in the game. And if she keeps on uh, throwing in those uh, sand spells onto your backline, onto your frontline sometimes even, and especially the slowing sands, which makes it so problematic for traditional engagers to really get to her, you need to have something like a Karazim, a Zeratul even, to really put her under a lot of pressure. Sony with the lead could yeah. maybe do the same job. Feral Lunge, the, uh, the uh, engage from Greymane as well. They do have that dive potential. Poland, they do have a little bit of peeling potential in the form of VTC. What else could they get here to try and avoid that Chromie blow up? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, some counter CC is nice. A cleanse, a divine shield, a divine palm even to protect the target that gets into that first focus fire. Um, 
What do you think, Bakery? See, I'm actually looking more towards the Czech Republic here. So they just picked up Vega and they just picked up Sonya. Pair that with the Gremlin that they had first, and you have po possibly the scariest three openers you can have when it comes to that rotation. Instant Wave Clay on top side, a lot of tower pressure on top side, and the strongest solo lane in the game in the terms of Sonya. So definitely a scary setup, and I'm really interested in what Poland has to do to counteract that. Yeah, that's a really cool ban here. Malthale is probably one of the few heroes who can rival Asanya in that lane. And getting rid of him, and we saw what Malthale could do yesterday, by the way. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. You he, don't he was destroying exactly. that map. <laughs> like, Team Germany, I think it was, uh, absolutely crushed faces with that hero. And if you don't have a counter to it, if you don't feel comfortable playing against it, you may as well ban it. Yeah, there are other heroes who can fit into the solo lane, but none of them are even as efficient. We actually saw a little bit at BlizzCon, Tempo Storm leaning a bit on the Kerrigan on this map, yeah. even, as that potential sort of replacement in that way sometimes yeah. and sometimes with it as the circles of death build i believe it was uh, described as i think we saw kerrigan on this battleground yesterday as well with the johanna uh, i think that was volskaya right? oh, was that volskaya yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but the kerrigan was very successful with her fantastic pink skin um, <laughs> it looked marvelous. so stukov mafiorian picked up double support very standard especially on team of the spider queen the reason why is it allows you to do a really strong and really solid three two man setup where you can have three people rotating that would be the etc uh the chromie and the malfurion they have the wave clear and they have a lot of kill potential with that lockdown and on the bot side you're going to have stukov and possibly another melee or possibly another ranged assassin as well so that's one of the few setups you can have that really does counteract that sonya yeah, speaking of uh, sorry, sorry. Interrupt, speaking of counteracting the Sonya silences, two of them there, which yeah. are especially effective against Sonya. Why is that? Yeah, a lot of people always consider stuns uh, as the prime measure against the Sonya, but silences are just as efficient, sometimes yeah. even more efficient because they normally last longer, especially yeah. that Twilight Dream by Malfurion. And they are not affected by Wrath of the Berserker. Wrath of exactly. the Berserker only affecting stuns, roots, and slows. Yep. Not affecting the lovely silences. Licking of silences, though, a bright wing entering in, even though she struggled to find a place in the first couple games yesterday. Yeah, not because she's not a good hero, but she was yeah, banned all bad. the time. <laughs> <laughs> she found a place just in the wrong part of the draft, in the yeah. bad section. So, Johanna pick as well, and that's a pick that coming into the tournament we thought would be quite valuable, but every time it was picked yesterday, it was very underwhelming. So, I'm wondering if Czech Republic can change Johanna's fortunes for this tournament. Yeah, it's not a bad hero per se on Tomb of the Strider Queen. She brings a lot of early game pressure, good wave clear. She can really set up combos as well with a Greyman cocktail, for example. So remains to be seen whether the Czech Republic has found a way to make her shine. And I am a strong believer in Poland's draft. They close out with the Tracer, not only for the United Kingdom pride that Tracer represents, <laughs> but also because Malfiori and Tracer is one of the few combinations outside of Tassadar Tracer that can really make her work. She can go in, she can take poke. As soon as she comes back, she can receive that regrowth and heal basically up to full because yeah. her health pool is so tiny. Similar yeah. situation with Stukov as well. Healing over time, just consistently keeping Tracer alive and the amount of pressure that Chromian Tracer offer, can what can Czech Republic do about that? Do you think they have the tools available? Yeah, it's going to be rough for them for sure. Um, as Bakery said, the Tracer is a very hard hero to deal with, especially if it's in a capable hands of Poland. And we do have a couple of players in the roster who could play that Tracer. Gugas, for example, who many people consider to be a very strong ranged assassin in the Grandmaster tier. Um, I'm very excited to see who's going to play her because Mana, once again, yeah. probably on that Chromie. <laughs> and remember, guys, that you can vote on who you think is going to win. Uh, you can vote by typing in the codes, P, uh, hashtag PLWIN if you think Poland is going to win, or hashtag CZWIN if you think the Czech Republic can take it in this series. Let's ask you guys, though, who do you think is going to win? Looks like we had a lot of believers in the opening of the draft in the Czech Republic. They're yeah. up on 40%, which is surprisingly yeah, high bad. given the players that we see on these teams. But... I am definitely leaning towards Poland. The, the Tracer pick has secured it for me. I'm going to go with Poland for now. If the Czech Republic plays stronger than I think they will, then maybe I'm going to change my mind later on during the game. But for now, Poland it is. Yeah, a lot of leaning towards Poland from both the Twitch chat and from our analysts here, as I believe we are getting ready to head into the game very shortly. But are there any final thoughts? Final thoughts is it's all going to depend how effectively can Poland pull off this 3-2 setup. Will they get out wave cleared? Will their bot lane lose? Or will Czech Republic be able to execute their standard 4-1 and come out on top? Yeah, I think there is a lot of weight on the shoulders of Johanna. She really needs to tackle those backliners, which is not an easy thing to do as Johanna unless she goes falling sword. But really, are we going to see that? I don't think so. So if Johanna has a good day, maybe they can protect them.
All right, thank you very much, guys, as we are heading into game number one of this best of three series. And Kendrick, would you like to introduce the team on the left? It would be my pleasure. So on the left-hand side, we've got the Polish team with Mana on the Chromie. We have Wolfsy on the Malfurion. We have Dune uh, on uh, the ETC. Arjif is playing the Stukov, and Gugus is playing the Tracer. Cool to see. Whereas on the right-hand side, it is going to be Deathra playing the Greymane. Kenny on the Rhaegar th uh, Thray? Yeah, Thray yep. is playing the Johanna. RMX is going to be playing on that Sonya. And finally, it is going to be Zagadus. He is playing the Brightwing, and that is the Czech Republic. Yeah, we've got a pretty cool thing here about that Chromie as well. Um, it's always interesting to see which talents she's going to go for. Um, not necessarily at level one, but because she gains access to those towns a lot earlier than other characters, sometimes you can really determine which playstyle play she's going to go for uh, a lot earlier than another hero. So the time works pursuit for now. It's yep. probably one of the best towns in the game in terms of, uh, you know, how diverse and how strong it can be. Um, it offers you vision. That's already super good. It offers you ability power if you yep. get enough region globes. That's awesome. But guess what? It also gives you mana region. And you can really <laughs> tell the difference on a Chromie, or if you play Chromie yourself, if you pick that talent or if you leave it up. Yeah, got to keep that blue bar high because all oh, of yeah. everything Chromie does very much relies on mana. So uh, having that level one talent, if we s sometimes see a bit of Q build coming in uh, as the level in one China. talent instead in China, for <laughs> yeah. example. Uh, but it is... Undoubt uh, undoubtful. Uh, it is pretty obvious that Time Wolf's Pursuit is the most popular talent on yeah. that level. We also saw Mafia Ring going for a bit of Moonfire too, so assisting with yeah. the wave clear. And another fanaticism, Johanna. Yeah, we saw that yesterday, and fanaticism is a very interesting talent in a way that it gives Johanna more protection against burst damage and, of course, crowd control because her iron skin uh, denies all sorts of stuns, slows, roots, etc. So uh, with Johanna players opting into that option, they actually give up health region, which they could have gone from Laws of Hope, um, and go for more burst protection, which is very nice. And it lowers the cooldown as well. It does indeed. And speaking of lowering cooldown, Brightwing with her teleport cooldown reduction. So a little bit of extra uh, going to combo very well with Peekaboo at the later levels. And Johanna in the silence. Beautiful combo there. All of the lockdown and the silence from Stukov to prevent her from dropping her shield. Oh. Zethra nearly dropping two. Hyper aggression for Poland to start this off. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to see here from the Polish team. They are the big favorites. They're one of the top two, top three, top four teams in the Nexus games. And if they show any signs of weakness, that could really snowball uh, into the latest stages of the tournament. Because once you lose that momentum, once you lose that team synergy, and once you lose the confidence to really, um, you know, trust your players, it could be a disaster here. Really could be a disaster. At level two, we see Chromie with the bronze talents. Once yeah. again, very standard build so far. Spine launch of Stukov. A uh, little bit of extra slow, a little bit of extra range, keeping himself safe. He's got a solid front line in the form of ETC. Does not want to be the one caught out of position. Exactly. Now we see the stronger wave clear kicking into effect already for the Czech Republic team. Uh, they do have heroes like Johanna, the Greymane, of course, with the Coctus, even the Regar, which for support has an astounding amount of wave clear. And uh, they're pushing Pol the Polish team a little bit back, and Chromie and Stuka, they can't really keep it up. But that bottom lane here, that's going to be a very interesting one to follow here. We have, as we call him, the mobile hospital yesterday, Malfurion, <laughs> uh, pumping up the Tracer. Unfortunately, he can't give mana to it, so that's the only downside. Yeah, Tracer is not accepting care. mana. There used to be a talent on Malfurion where he could actually innovate uh, heroes without yep. mana and just gave them attack speed, but that talent has since been removed. Brightwing picking up that peekaboo. Brightwing also very efficient in that dual lane, very similar to Morales, as her healing does not require mana. Yep. As long as she keeps an eye on her mana bar and doesn't just blow too many Qs or blow too many polymorphs, she's going to be able to keep that lane sustained for a very long time. Very early attempt at a term in there for RMZMX. Oh. Is he going to get stunned by Xa? No. Chromie yeah. was giving him a little bit of a... And a good shield from Brightwing as well to yeah, block that, that nice. shot. Yeah, Brightwing is going to be a crucial hero to stop most of the Chromie burst damage on those combos because Pixie does provide spell armor to the protected target. So if uh, Brightwing happens to have a good day, then she can thwart most of the damage that Chromie could put out. We see Resmex taking a little bit of poke damage, but double heal is able to heal him back up. 
With only one kill on the board so far, I don't expect unless we see a very hard engage from Poland, we'll be seeing yeah. another one too soon due to, once again, the double check for both to teams. Complaint. Good route. They want to try something, but the immediate disengages. Yeah. Even Zed, uh, even Zadun not able to dive deep enough. Brywing, not though, good. gets bombed, and she goes flying with the help of the bomb and the party gift. Zadun is also able to escape. They don't even drop a hero in exchange. That was the worst possible outcome for Czech Republic here. They invested five heroes to get a gank going. Look at those slows and boosts, by the way. Oh, uh, but scary. they didn't get the grip on that target. Everyone was playing so safe on the side of the Polish team. And in return, they even managed to take someone out on their opponent's side. So big disaster for Czech Republic. And this opens the map up for, for the Polish team so well. They get to pay all their gems 40 out of 50 already here. They are just pumping those gems into that spider nest to get the first web weave away. But if they can do so, we've already seen how well France did it yesterday. They can try to snowball out of control. For now, though, both teams once again calming down, just trying to get in gems. EDC will get zoned out. Kenny will turn in. Did unfortunately get chunked by a bit of Chromie damage, but Chromie herself, a little bit low thanks to some harassment yeah. from Deathra. The silences uh -oh. are so good, yeah. Kendrick. And we saw that yesterday as well. Stukov, if, uh, you know, oh, he's... Oh, Deathra. Oh, 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 did die gotcha. by the trap. Yeah, unfortunately, the Sandfire is not go, hitting, dude. but doesn't even need to because Gugus is on a wolf hunt and he executes Greymane. Like it was the easiest thing in the world to do. And Gugus is a player that I really want to highlight here. I've talked to uh, a lot of Grandmaster players before the Nexus game started, and they were all speaking very highly of Gugus, saying that he's probably one of the coolest players in the European scene. And if you have an on your team in a, in a Hero League game, then you're already set in for a beautiful ride. Yes, you are. You're going to have a good time with him. And like I said, I've been casting him for quite a while in yeah. Open Division as well. He has consistently impressed, including one of my favorite combos of him on Cho'Gal with Glue Hammer. Ooh. So he, we know he can play that where they were Gugus. As we do see the retreat nice from route. Wolves trying to escape. And finally, the Czech Republic pick up a kill as Malfurion yeah. goes down. So. On the one hand, it is good that the Czech Republic managed to get that kill on Malfurion because it takes a lot of pushing power away from their opponents. On the other hand, they once again invested a lot of time and a lot of resources to get that gang going, leaving middle, leaving top a little bit open. And as you can see here, the Polish team can do so much damage with those heroes. The triple lane in that top lane supported by the White Fever, getting rid of the towers, and that is all that matters. The early tower destruction really causes your team to snowball ahead in global experience. Exactly, and it's even helping Chromie, who is continuing to get the Sandblast Axe and has already finished Time Walker's yeah. Pursuit. Already has her heroics since level 8, thanks to her own trait, getting talents two levels earlier, going for that Slowing Sand. Yeah, Slowing Sands is, of course, the right choice here. Not only can you have wonderful synergy with the Stukov Silence in those narrow choke points near the turn in points, but also, let's face it, Temporal Loop would really make a lot of sense against yeah. the potential double cleanse, against one cleanse that's guaranteed by Regar. So, uh, yeah, I, I like the Slowing Sands. It's, in my opinion, almost, almost always the better call. Right wing as well. This does free her up to take the phase shield. She does exactly. not need that second cleanse. So she's going to be a little bit grateful that she does not require uh, require that so she can continue to protect yeah. her team from that potential burst damage that Chromie offers. Yeah, and if you go Temporal Loop as well, then and you have a Bright Wing on the opposing yeah. team, it's very easy it's for the Bright Wing to just click E and nothing's going to happen, even if you land the beautiful, uh, most exactly. beautiful of combos. Drops the, sh drops the shield, gives everyone sustained. As we have level 10 available for Team Poland here, we're seeing Mafia with Twilight Dream, we see the Mosh Pit, the Flailing Swipe, and we do see it, the Slowing Sand. You see the Blessed Momentum here at level 7 as well for the Johanna. Yesterday we talked a lot about the Subdue talent, which of course corresponds to her Q ability, but uh, the Blessed Momentum, I'm, I'm a personally a big fan of it. I think Johanna can get a lot of value, can get a lot of additional uh, blinding and uh, CCing off if she lowers the cooldown of her basic abilities constantly. Gugus completely on the web beam nice. right before the wave comes out, dying a big chunk of damage that yeah. dropped onto multiple buildings there. However, in this time, we do see that the Czech Republic have managed to farm themselves up to level 10. And this Web Weaver did a lot of damage to the top four. Czech Republic, despite being three kills down, holding themselves together right now. Yeah, big kudos to the Czech Republic uh, team here because the Czechs were able to basically stay close in XP, and as you said, they haven't lost a single fort despite the first, despite the fact that the first turn was against yeah. them. So they're holding up pretty nicely. But as we're saying it, the cast of curse becomes a reality, and Greymane is the one who ends up falling. Ancestral not landing in time at all. It uh -oh. did only go on the 10-second cooldown. And a nice party gift by Gugas, picking up yet another kill. Six kills to one. 
Yeah, that Tracer so far can't be contained. Uh, you do have a lot of ways to shut her down on the side of the Czech Republic team. You have Blinds by Johanna, you have the Polymorph, etc., etc. But Gugus is so good of a player, he waits patiently until he gets the chance to go in. And that's a sign of a really good player. Don't always commit heavily once you see the opponent. Don't always go face, basically. But <laughs> wait until some of the counters are on cooldown and then make your move. Could not agree more. Also, Blinds by Johanna sounds like a really quite nice perfume. Lines by Johanna. As the Dune pushes in, Johanna is going to be attempting to defend this area from the side. Actually, she looks like yeah. she's going to try and make a gank and immediately finds a Chromie trap. The retreat is imminent here. Johanna trying to get something. Drops the flesh shield even. Maybe a bit oh. from a jaw. In the slow, in the side is cleared. Oh, and no. Ancestral doesn't land. Twilight Fade from any turn oh. around. And we are going to see all three members here for the Czech Republic get taken out. Brightwing was thinking about teleporting in and now has no one to TP to. And this push will continue. And you know what the worst part about this is? All those gems on the side of the Czech Republic oh, were man. lost and dropped and are now nowhere to be found. The Polish team absolutely crushing their opponents in that move. Everything landed. Yeah, from start to finish, the mosh pit, the follow-up was there, the damage, the silence from Ophir, and he was actually my MVP in that team fight. Wolfsey doing such a wonderful job. Yeah, they, I don't really know why the Czech Republic chose that opportunity to engage. It was I like we've know. lost someone. Yeah. I guess we try and get some value, but they dive right into Mafurin, who just, you know, hit R, and it went yeah. really well. It was per perfectly timed, and then, like you said, everything landed. They are in trouble. Speaking of trouble, though, Chromie does see this coming, thanks to her level one. Boss not finished yet. They can make oh, it in. Johanna trying to wait forward. She doesn't make it onto the point, but they still got a very nice choke point here to try and trap some members of Poland. Zoop is actually in a really rough Ooh. position. Down goes Brightwing, though. Emerald Wind landing. The Root catching all of the members in the slowing sand for good measure. And down goes Rhaegar. We're seeing Sonya desperately trying to stay alive. The rest of the members not escaping. The tornado from the boss stops them running away. Greymane tries to finish off Goo. Gugas can't do so. EDC not the <laughs> most not amount go. of damage. This might go... Okay, Chromie saving the day there. I could have gone downhill very yeah. fast. But that is four members down only in exchange for Stukov in favor of Poland. Oh, Mana had a good time on that Chromie there. The slowing stance <laughs> catching everybody. The wonderful synergy with ETC, with the Zadoon here. They were just aiming their spells and timing them in perfect synchrony. Unfortunately for the Czech Republic team, that ended up being pretty bad for them. And during all of this, of course, the boss was helping out as well, crushing those towers, sending tornadoes to help them out and catch their <laughs> opponents. So, uh... Yeah, that was not pretty. I really enjoyed the zoning flailing strike there, the, the zoning <laughs> yeah. ult from Stukov yeah. to slow them down. Johanna did her utmost best. She was just short of standing off the point. Yeah, uh, but that was close. due to the row, the zoning that they were able to do earlier. Very nice job by uh, Zhuf there. I think the Johanna player actually used his iron skin trade too early because that prevented him from stepping on that platform. Yeah. He had used it a little bit later, but then maybe the flailing, flailing strike would have hit him in the first place. So it was really hard for uh, the Czech team to make a move there against the perfectly lined up defenses by Poland. Right now, Poland, picking a perfectly lined up, move into mid lane, immediately destroy this mercenary camp. They're not going to have too much trouble with that. They, like I said, we don't have, they don't have the best wave clear, but they don't exactly have a huge amount of problem. Unfortunately, this does mean that their web weaver wave does spawn very far back. Exactly, so the Web Weavers, they need a little bit of time to really get there, and that's a little bit of a problem on this map. When your Web Weavers start too far in the back, then they're going to lose a lot of health on their way to the towers, because whenever they spawn their minions, whenever they use the Purple Goo, they're going to drop health continually. The Brightwing, still not with the team, desperately trying to soak them some extra XP and also yeah. clear that bottom Web Weaver. Uh, but this, now, this keep is potentially in serious danger. Johanna Where's is Brightwing? the one being focused. Brightwing teleporting in, not in time. Brightwing, we see uh, Johanna going down and the keep shall fall soon after. Sonya was trying to get a wrap around here, gets the Brightwing into the fray, but this keep is oh, gone. No, the double, double silence. silence. Mosh pit is actually a bit late because the hero died too fast. Oh, boy. And that looks like it's going to be GG. Yeah. Only the double supports left as Poland push in for the core. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the Polish team just did it. Death timers are very low. Nine seconds until Johanna comes back to life. But the Polish team is not done just yet. They're hunting everybody. The early GG gets Kenny. thrown out there as well. Who killed Kenny? I can't believe it. The Polish team is not letting go. They're collecting one after the other. And with no difficulty at all, they're taking this first game on Tomb of the Spider Queen. GG.
score goes down and a lot of people were looking at Poland as their favorites and they are showing that that could be favor well placed as Poland take game number one. Yeah. That was, do you think that was more or less one-sided than the French France UK game? I'd say that was more one-sided actually. <laughs> they were, Poland were absolutely on point the entire game and um, yeah, the tracer play from Gugus, the ETC play even, and just about everything, even Manon and Chromie was yeah. impressive. So really a full five-man team performance. Yeah, you hardly saw any missed spells there on the side of the team yeah. uh, from Poland. You, like, Bruce hitting there, I'm going to get you in this march pit. I'm going to collect everybody. We're going to collect everybody. And the tech team, although they did have a good draft and a good thought process behind it, countering some of the heroes potentially, they just couldn't execute it. Yeah, and we, ca we can't ignore some of the Czech players. Which ones do you think maybe stood out there? Which ones could they maybe build something around to try in the next game? I think Thry was doing considerably well, but it's really hard to make out any good performance when your whole team is basically getting annihilated like that. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's not that the Czech players played yeah. badly, but they were outclassed, outclassed every step yeah. of the way as a five-man team, and that made it really hard to shine. The, the one thing I will say is the Johanna Vega were slightly not together. So they're both making fine plays, but they were not doing it together. Vega was running up, Johanna was running down. Well, would you like to show us some of the lovely highlights I from have, that game have from the side of Poland? I have plays for you today. So the first is going to be the 12 versus 11 team fight. And the game's kind of even up to this point. Johanna comes in, she gets time tapped, okay? Now, she blows her unstoppable, and she suddenly realizes Amateur was blizzard. Now she uses Bless Shield. But wait, Stukov realizes Johanna's in trouble here. Vazuf and she's completely out of position. Is stuck in the science. The ancestral just not in time. And this is the story of the game. Poland blowing people up before the ancestral comes out. They try and turn. They've got no ancestral. The huge Twilight Dream, huge Moss Pit on three. And this is where the game turns from being relatively even to Poland taking the perfect fight, hitting every skill on point, and then absolutely annihilating the Czech Republic and running away with it from here. The one chance the Czech Republic have is going to be this next replay. It's going to be the boss fight. Yeah. So they, they die, they reset, they come back from base, and they run immediately to the boss. We saw Johanna, she popped D instantly, but she still got time tapped. And they do a fantastic job. Look at the body blocks, look at the slide as soon as the unstoppable ends, keeping Johanna out of the boss. Now the boss is taken. Huge play for mana, blows up the right wing. Uh, Vazu keeping the whole team on him, root on everyone, slowing sands on everyone, and this is going to be the whole team going down. The really impressive things there was how composed Poland were and their positioning that they took. So even though it was a tense situation, they kept the level ahead, they had Fermi running back at the boss pit, and she was in a fantastic position. Held her combo as soon as she knows. She knows Brightwing's casting and would win. She waits for it to happen. As soon as she starts casting, instant combo, instant one shot. And that was basically the fight over. Yeah, and it's really cool to see these micro plays by those top tier players. I mean, it's similar to an Uther Divine Shield. The only thing that you can do in order to really cripple the target that is still Divine Shielded is body blocking them, preventing them from escaping. And that's exactly what happened with the Johanna. They're the only way they could have stopped her from interrupting and buying a couple more seconds. Well done. Yeah. Really, really solid play by Team Poland here, but you did mention it was a little bit even to begin with. The Czech Republic were able to hold the lanes well, but the second it actually came to team fighting and stuff like that, it seemed to fall apart. So I think the big problem that Poland had is they got the first turn in, everything was looking really solid. I think they were up four kills possibly, and then when their turn in was coming down the lane, they actually lost someone in the bot lane. Someone died, I believe. Was it Malfa Stukov? It was... Uh, that uh, was Malf. Yeah, I think it was I believe Malf. Malfurion died in the bot lane. They, there was a four-man gank, fantastic play from Czech Republic. Brightwing came in as well. Malf died, and that's what allowed Czech Republic to stabilize their early game. And then a really solid play around that top turn in, zoning the Kromi, blocking the Qs, and eventually poking out the team with Stukov, which was very impressive. Yeah, Stukov in general just looked so good on this map. Um, Combine that with the slowing stands we mentioned earlier, yeah. the roots, they had so much AoE zoning control near those choke points and the turn-in point, and there was just no way that the Czech Republic could walk in there with Johanna, who doesn't have mobility to surpass it. She can only walk in there, Iron Shield used, or Iron Skin used, excuse me, but that's oftentimes too predictable. And of course, both of the 